What's up? This is Demrick. Jamie Madge Rock. Man, this is your man's Obi Trice. This is Adlib. Yo, what up? This is Specs One. This is Fresh K. Hot Rock's the motherfucking Scrat MC. Breaking Records. Breaking Records Radio out here. This is Breaking Records Radio. Check them out, man. Yes, yes. Breaking Records Radio in the place to be. You know what it is. Right. It's your man Maloney, and we got a special guest, yes, Clean McGork. Yes, what's up? And we've been meaning to get this for it's a long a time now. It's been a minute eh? now. It's, yeah, it's like it's been almost a year. It's not like we just met today. No. We've been no. knowing each other. We've been trying to do this for about a year. I think it was since um, Rock Pile was when we really first discussed When Ill Bill and them guys were Yeah, Ill Bill yes. and them. Yep, That's yep. right. That's right. But um, so either way, we got Clean McGork here, and we couldn't pick a more perfect time because right now the man has got a brand new project in the works. And if I'm not mistaken, this is your first solo project. Without I Riviera? I have one solo. You have one other solo. El okay. Regime Volume 1 is my first okay, solo. Okay, that shit. was a solo. That's correct. Okay, I yes. thought that was a group effort. No, that was my shit. It was like a collaboration kind of project. It was more like a mixtape street yeah. album. Yeah. Because I had all kinds of joints on there. But you're right. Right now, what I'm doing is focusing on me my solo kind of career, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I got tracks, I just dropped two tracks this year so far, so I got the hardcore rap joint with Onyx. With Onyx. That's just dope. And I got the Beast with Jeru, which I yeah. dropped just the other day. And do you know what's funny too? Because I just started writing for Hip Hop Canada. And the first assignment... Well, oh, thank you, thank you. All I appreciate right? that. No doubt. The first assignment they gave me was to find a local artist and do a write-up about him. Before they gave me the assignment, yeah. I said, Yo, I'm doing an interview with Klee on Saturday. I'm doing an interview with J. Ru Sunday. Let me know if you want me to do transcripts or any of these. And they're like, no. They're like, more the direction we want to go with is this. And they said, don't do Klee and the J. Ru joint, though, because we already have somebody writing it up. All right. They do. They do. They, they gave us props yeah. and press. So I thought so that was shout dope. Shout out to Hip Hop Canada. Come. We love you all, man. Thank you for representing what I do. And I'll always give you that exclusive shit. So just much love to HipHopCanada.com. You know what I mean? And I thought that was cool too. You know what definitely, I mean? Like, definitely. You know, it was definitely cool. Yeah, but um, so either way, let's talk a little bit about yourself because we yeah. mean to do this interview for a minute. For real. So, um, Riviera Regime. Yes, sir. Now, the first time I ever heard of Riviera Regime, I went to go see because before I moved up here in 2014, Toronto, mm -hmm. I lived in Brantford, small little town. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if you've been through I've been that. There. I've been They're there. one of the closest yeah. casinos around here. Small, you've probably been there. It's you a know. small town. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah, a little I'm small Ontario. Yeah. You know what I mean, I'd be out exactly. here. I'd be, so, you know, be out here. Wayne Gretzky's hometown, yeah. little bullshit yeah. city. But yeah, so that's where I grew up. Right. But um, I first heard of Riviera Regime oh, coming to Toronto to check a Necro show. Okay, fair enough. And um, now I know you guys did two albums before you actually did the Psycho. Uh, real, real, the Real Soldiers Ride yeah. that I dropped Before you signed with Records. Necro. Right. Yeah, with yeah. Psychological. That's correct. Yes. So you did two albums prior to that. That's right. but, um, and we will talk about that. Right. But the one thing I'm curious about is like, how did the whole thing come about with Necro? Like, yeah. was it literally just through doing the tours and stuff? And I like, mean, with Necro, what it was, and I've, I've said this in interviews in the past, I hit him up. I, I was interested in what he was doing. I was put on to his music. I didn't know he was, what, who he was, what he was. Yeah. I didn't know about him. I didn't know about Ill Bill. I didn't know about any of that. I'm from Toronto. I do my thing. Exactly. I mean, so you know what you I know got. the 90s era rappers like Jay Ru and them guys, Onyx, that I was a fan of. When the when the label still ran shit. Right. But then the internet phase right. came through, and then right? Was, and that's when dudes like Necro exactly. and all these guys came to our attention, right? And then I was... But put on to Necro by, by people out here. They're like, yo, check him out. So I inter I Googled his ass yeah. back in the day and I saw his shit and I hit him up because I was interested because I like what he was doing. Yeah. He's, he's talented. He's super talented. There's, there's no denying that. No, no. So I at hit all. him up. And beat maker wise? He's super talented. Super talented. Crazy. So I hit him up. Let him know who I am, what I do, Riviera Regime, what we do. And he's a Jewish cat. I'm a Jewish cat. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay, cool. So cool. I thought that was something he might get a kick out of, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and back in them, in them days, like in 04, 04 ish, when I hit him up, it was less. It was there was a lot le less yeah. hip hop artists trying to really blow up at that time because it was the like, internet was kind of new at that time. Yeah. Like, well, the internet wasn't fully new, but that whole hip hop being pushed on the yeah. internet was new. So I hit him up and like let him know what, what we do and what we do and whatnot. And he was cool and whatever. And we, we, we connected. And then from there, 
We just did more shit together, and I had an album already ready. Yeah. Before I so even... So he just kind of put the album you already had. I already had it ready. Okay, He cool. only produced one track on that album. Yeah, because I noticed that too, and that's what I yeah. was actually... Okay. So, so for the most part, bro, it was my album ready to go, but... I was cool with Necro, bigger platform and we were doing more stuff. That, but yeah, at, at one point we were doing stuff with him. We like we did a show in Toronto, then we started touring yeah. with him. We weren't on his label, but we were touring. We were doing stuff with him. Oh, so you guys did the tours and That's stuff right. before you guys were even at least two years. Of okay, that, yeah. Before like he offered me yeah. to release my new shit on his shit. So that's what I was gonna say too. Yeah. Like when I first heard of Riviera Regime, right, right. Lee McGoy, like that was. It was on a Necro tour. Fair enough. So that's yeah. like, And yeah. Necro gave us a lot of exposure. And for that, I got much love for Necro. And everything, you know what I mean? So we was on his label for like one for like one album. It was just that one project. But we toured with him a lot. Like four, yeah. four years at touring. Like I've actually touring with him and connecting and doing a lot of shit with people that he was down with and so on. Yeah. And I got love for all those people, you know what I'm saying? But after that one album, things kind of just fizzled out as far as how the relationship business-wise panned out yeah and i went on and did my own thing independently with landmine entertainment which was i what i was, well, doing and I was gonna say you had landmine entertainment had for the first two hours exactly yeah. so i just went back to the original the blueprint. original format yeah. and just went back to it hell yeah dope man yeah.